Well, it's classwork contemplations time, which means that we are now looking at the new stuff for today. Let's see how we are going and what we can possibly do here. So we're going to talk about numbers in the real world, um, how we might use them as conversation piece. And it's a great example of quantitative literacy and understanding where things are coming from. Specifically today, we're going to talk about percentages and ways in which they're used commonly and also at times abused. Now, understanding percentages. Forget percentages for a second. Let's talk about the word hello. Do you say hello? Well, how do you say hello in each of these circumstances? Come across your buddy in the mall. You apply for the job. You meet the boss. You meet the president of the United States of America. Do you say hello the same way in all those situations and circumstances? Well, fraction decimals and percents are all ways of expressing the same ideas. Like, you see your buddy in the mall, you might turn around and say, hey bud, how are you? You apply for your job and you meet the boss, you're going to be respectful in how you say hello. You meet the president, do you turn around and say, yo man, sup dog, to the president? <laughs> No way! I don't care if you like the guy or not. You still respect the office. Or think about it this way for those who play sports. How do you talk to the ref in your game? You talk a little wrong, you can end up in a world of hurt. Um, let's say you got a best buddy by the name of Tom Radovich. I just made that name up. I don't even know a Tom Radovich. And you say, good evening, Mr. Thomas Radovich. Who the heck talks like that? Each greeting, from yo dog to the, uh, for the president to good evening, Mr. Thomas Rodovich, the greeting's out of place. And you want to understand that with percentages. You see, there's fractions, decimals, and percents. And there's a time and a place for fractions, there's a time and a place for decimals, and there's a time and a place for percents. Fractions are typically used with cooking, with construction, with the stock market. Decimals are typically used with money, the metric system, science as a whole, and percents, investments, sales, comparisons, things like that. So we have to be on top of it and we have to understand each of these different applications. And today we're going to focus mostly on the percent applications. Percent, literally technically percent, comes from the French language out of 100. Now, I just gotta pause for a second here and tell you that the French language and I do not get along. <laughs> To say the least. I took French for a day in college. Um, I did all my undergrad work at uh, Albany State, and there was a point in time where I, I hadn't made up my mind if I wanted to be, well, I knew I was going to be a math major. I didn't know if I wanted it to be a BA, which is a Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics, or if I wanted a BS, a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics. I was considering taking a minor in Physics, which I did eventually do. But I also knew darn well that physics was real hard, and I didn't know if I wanted to devote the time. I paid my own way through college and got 700 bucks from my parents in four years. So, and that's not a slight of my parents. They love me. We just had no money. So, um, I thought about possibly taking a foreign language. I had taken Spanish in high school. In fact, yo hablo un poquito español, eh? Yo pescado mucho. That means I like to go fishing a lot. French. I never learned French. So I went to study French for one day. I went, I signed up for the class. I went in and I met Professor Harrington, who was in class, Professor Harrington. And she goes up to the board and on the board, she writes M-O-N-S-I-E-U-R. And she says, anybody know what that is? Now, I was the kind of guy who went to class. I wore work boots, blue jeans and flannel shirts, hoodies. And I'm sitting there, and I was the kind of guy who would lean back in my chair, put my feet up. I, I didn't really take a lot of notes unless I couldn't figure things out. So I look at this M O N S I E U R. I pop my hand up. She goes, she or yo, we or whatever the French word is there. I go, bonjour. She goes, ah, no. I said, yes. M O N S, mons, I E U R, je, bonjour. She goes, no. This is monsieur. I go, no, it's not. And I walked up to the board and I wrote M-I-S-S-Y-O-U-R. That's Monsieur. And I walked out. And I, it wasn't disrespectful. I just decided right then and there that I wasn't taking French. So I dropped French and then I got my minor in physics. And that was the end of that. Then I got my teaching career. So it worked out. Now, 
percent comes from that same French language that I struggled so much with. It means out of 100. Now, cent always means 100, right? Century has 100 years, 100 cents in a dollar. Um, common sense, nobody in 100 has it. Ha, ha, ha. No. Um, cents always means 100. Century has 100 years. Per means out of, like a periscope sees out of the water, right? Scope C, per, para out, sees out of the water. Same idea. So percent means out of 100. In fact, even the percent symbol shows 100. The slash on the side is the one, and the zero above and below show you it's a way of writing 100. It's a shorthand way. Now, if you're going to convert from a percent to a fraction, just write it out of 100. Okay, so for instance, if I said 55%, that would be 55 out of 100, which is said 55 over 100. And then you reduce it. Now, years ago, reducing could drive you crazy as a student. And uh, I remember sometimes I would come up with the answers in fifth grade to some wild fraction question. And I would spend more time trying to figure out, excuse me, does this number reduce? I, 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 it's like... I, doing the questions was easy. Figuring out if the fractions could reduce would drive you crazy. But nowadays, you guys have calculators. A scientific calculator will reduce it, and also a graphing calculator. So the easiest way on a graphing calculator, which is what I use, is the alpha y equals button. Hit alpha y equals, and then you'll get a template. Choose the one that fits the fraction you're given, whether it's a mixed number or not. And then if you just put 55 in the top and 100 in the bottom and hit enter, it's not going to come up 55 over 100. It'll come up. Why did I put 5 over 11? It's 11 over 20. So I don't know why I had a brain cramp and put 5 over 11. It should be 11 over 11 over 20. All right. All right. There's the 11 over 20. And then just to prove I actually do know how to reduce fractions <laughs> with a college degree. 80% reduces to 80 over 100, 20 divides it to each of them, so uh, 80 over 100 is 4 over 5. So if you just put it in the calculator, it'll reduce it for you. Just remember, if you want to convert from a percent to a fraction, just write it out of 100. So 55%, 55 out of 100. 80%, 80 out of 100. How many decimal places? Why I spelled it with an E, I don't know. Maybe I was in a hockey mood. How many decimal places are associated with 100? Two decimal places are associated with 100. If you want to convert from a percent to a decimal, emphasis on the L there, you move two places to the left. Decimal has the letter left in it, or the letter L in it, and moving two places to the left. So the L in decimal reminds you move to the left. If you want to convert to a percent, percent has an R in it, that reminds you to move two places to the R, or to the right. Now I'm positive they didn't figure this out when they made the word decimal and percent, but it's a nice little mnemonic device memory trick to help you to remember how to do that. So let's do some conversions between fractions, decimals, and percents. So I'm going to do the first row, then you'll do the second row. So if I want to convert three-fourths to a decimal, the way I do it is really, really easy. I just take my calculator and I type in three divided by four. That's it. Just three divided by four. And that gives me 0.75. Now, <clears throat> to convert from a decimal to a percent is even easier. Percent has the R in it. So you move two places which way? Two places to the right. So it would be 75%. Okay, you try the 3 eighths row, both decimal and percent. Do stop and start. Okay, so if you take your calculator and you do 3 divided by 8, you're going to get 0.375. And this is a really important example because some people, they don't focus very much when you say move the decimal two places to the right and they just see, oh, it started 0.75, it ended 75%. I just move it to the end. And that's not what was said. What was said was to move it two places to the right. So I only move two decimal places. It doesn't make it all the way to the end. It's 37.5%. Okay. Next, I'm given a decimal of 0.07. Let's convert that to a fraction. That's what we talked about before. To convert from a decimal to a fraction, just read it properly. It is, if I read that properly, I know we tend to read it 0 0.07, but proper, doing it like the British way, the proper English, the proper English pronunciation of 
0 0.07 is not 0 0.07. It is 0 and 7 one hundredths. And there's your fraction, 7 one hundredths. And then converting to a percent doesn't change. We move two places to the right. Moving two to the right, one, two, gives me 7%. Okay, you do 1.25. Okay. First, the one, just leave it a whole number. So what you're really only doing here is the 0.25. So if I convert 0.25 to a fraction, it is, proper British approach now, 25 hundredths. So one and 25 hundredths, but you put 25 hundredths in your calculator, it's not going to write 25 hundredths. It's going to write one fourth. So one and one fourth is the correct answer there. And to go to a percent, move two decimals to the right, I get... 125 percent okay so i think you can go from a percent to a decimal because you know to move two places to the left and then the decimal to the fraction or you can go directly from the percent to the fraction because we know percent means out of 100 so why don't you go directly to the fraction and then to the decimal and now i will give you the answers to this row in a moment Remember, you're always doing stop and stop. Okay, so 18% is 18 out of 100. Type that in the calculator. It's not going to tell you 18 out of 100. It's going to tell you 9 out of 50 because that's the reduced form. As far as the decimal goes, 18% moves two places to the left, 0.18. Okay, now you try 250%. First, you have 2 and 50 over 100, and that reduces to 2.5. And, and then as a decimal, it would be 2.5, right? Moving two places to the left, 1, 2. If you wanted to write 2.50, that would also be true. All right, so that's a brief review of fractions, decimals, and percents. So you know that they're used at different times. For instance, if um, we were talking about building something, we would be using a ruler and we would be using fractions. In the old days with the stock market, we would be using fractions. But if I was using the decimal system or money, you can bet we'd be going with decimals. If I was in science class, we'd be going with decimals. And percents, well, shopping, come on now, right? We're all shopping, comparing. Um, business decisions with respect to things like a mortgage for your house, uh, taking out a loan, percent is a really big deal. Okay, three basic questions that review the kind of work we did in middle and high school. But it's been so long that I don't want to just assume that you can get this stuff right. I want to just take a chance to cover three questions. And let's do one at a time. Fair warning, there is more than one way to do this question, and I only did it one way. Go ahead. Okay, you've had time to do number one. It says, what is 35% of 450? So if you said to yourself, I know that the word of means to multiply, and I'm going to convert 35% to 0.35, I'm going to do 0 0.35 times 450. That's the quickest way to do this. And for those people who are really fluent in percents, I don't think I really need to teach you. So just keep doing it that way. You understand you're getting it right. I really want to try more to teach the people who um, have struggled with percents during the course of their life. And there's another way that you could do it. And that is to understand really what percents are all about. Percent is comparing everything to 100. The 100 is the whole in a percent so um you know if you went and i'm not demeaning your ability to do work i'm sure you have a lot of abilities to do work but one of the simple things that that younger people do when they're younger and not you're getting out of this stage now but back in the day is they go babysitting or, or they work a job at uh mcdonald's or something and you figure okay if i work two hours and i get 22 dollars if I work five hours, how much would I get? So it's dollars is to hours, it's dollars is to hours. It's called proportional reasoning. And the same idea here, proportional reasoning. Percent over 100. Now, percent means the part of 100. So the part of the whole equals the part of the whole. Just like hours is to dollars is hours is to dollars. So percent over 100 equals part over whole is a specific application of proportional reasoning. You should also keep in mind that the word is often indicates the part, usually does, and of indicates the whole. 
So when I read what is 35% of 450, what I'm saying to myself is, okay, I have to fill in the places in this proportion. This is like a template to work. In the percent place, we'll go whatever I have as the percent here. 35 is linked up to percent, so I put 35 in the percent place. I look for the word is, and next to the word is, is what. So that's the thing I'm looking for, so I put n in the, in the what place. And the, the whole is what it's out of, and it's out of 450, so 450 is the whole. And once I fill these things in, we can do a thing that I'm sure you did growing up through school, cross multiply. 100 times n is 100n, 35 times 450 is 15,750. Divide both sides by 100, right? And I get n is 157.50. Okay, so I want to actually go back here. I don't want you to see that quite yet. Let's have you do 40 is what percent of 160? So you're going to take the template, you're going to fill things in on the template, cross multiply, get your answer. Go ahead. Okay, remember, we're always working stop and start. Okay. So, um, set up my proportion. Percent over 100 equals part over whole. This one says 40 is, so that goes in the top part, because that's the part out of the whole of 160. So the 40 is goes in the top, out of the whole of 160 goes in the bottom. And then the N, it says what percent? So I put the N in the percent place. Cross multiply, 160N equals 4,000, dividing both sides by 160, and I get N is 25. I didn't show the step where you divide by 160 here. I figured you knew how to do that. And last but not least, John catches 15 trout, 12 of which are rainbow trout. What percent of the trout caught are rainbow trout? Apparently, I hit the wrong key. That one's next to the question mark. Go ahead, figure out what percent of the trout caught are rainbow trout. Remember, percent over 100 equals part over whole. Okay, so um, percent over 100 is part of a whole, and the percent's what we're looking for, so the N goes in the percent place, and the 12 is the part that a rainbow trout out of the 15 total. So the N goes in the percent place, that's what I want, and the 12 is the part that's rainbow out of the 15. Cross multiplying, 15N is 1,200, dividing by 15, N is 80. So that's just a brief review, and it's not, none of it is particularly meant to be challenging, but that's some basic working with percentages right there. Now, three of the ways that you can use percentages. You can use them as a fraction, okay? 15% of the 850 students in the school were absent. You can use them for comparisons. You can use them to describe change. The price of a stock increased from 75%. Uh, increase 75% from $50 per share. A Mercedes costs 25% more than a Lexus. Now, that's not the only three ways to use percentages, but that's three of the ways to use percentages. And to be honest, you know, we're in college now, so we don't just do things like, you know, 12 out of 15 trout is what percent. We kick it up a notch, and we use it involving comparing one thing to another. And we'll get started on that on the next slideshow.